Hello and welcome to Clawful Evil Probable Claws, a show where we discuss Wildbo's most ben Evelyn work. I'm your conniving hostess, Kippos. And I'm your very villainous hostess, Vice Versailles. In this debriefing, we're covering chapter one of arc five, The Quick. Right, and yeah, new arc. Very exciting. And for the first time, not a new perspective. Yeah, that was very interesting. Um, I admit I felt very punked when I, because <laughs> I had just, we had, you know, finished recording arc four. Uh, the last chapter of arc four and i was saying how glad i was to be like out of ben's head um which because i i like i have enjoyed his perspective but he's i don't like him as a person (laughs) we have (laughs) talked him to death so i was like yay new perspective and then immediately we're right back into ben Um, and what's really (laughs) funny about that is um you know it's actually very normal in wild boat works to have us to have a consistent perspective character or um yeah to to have their na- like maybe their name in the chapter title. So uh, going into five dot one, there was absolutely no reason to res- suspect otherwise besides thus the just close own habits. Um, mm-hmm. But um, this, I really feel that we are working with a different Ben in this chapter. Yes, he sort of experienced an ego death at the very end there. <laughs> yeah, well, he's had so so much of his like underlying assumptions and stuff just kind of destroyed by the ending of arc four, um, where suddenly, you know, he was working with the system the whole time and like sometimes slightly adjacent to the system, but also always in the same kind of direction. And now Mm. he's being forced to reckon with the fact that the system is against him. Mm. Um, and so, yeah. How does he work when he's actually realized the system is against him? Also the fact that he doesn't have his camera, for most mm. of the chapter is, I mean, <laughs> I'm glad for it. Because um, you damn well know he would have been recording that like daycare and everything. <laughs> and in a way, Arc 4 is like the documentary, specifically the one that Ben has been working towards for so long. And Arc 5 is the documentary effectively being over. You know, um, Ripley has been returned to her mother and now they've uh, driven off into the sunset with the police. Um, yeah, <laughs> per- perfectly normal place to end the documentary. Um, yeah, but they're they're in police custody. They're fine. Um, uh, uh, but uh, you know, there is a, definitely a frame to consider Ben as having been a sort of centrist of a a person going for objectivity, trying to stay out of things, and thereby sort of enabling certain forces and, and and letting them pass uncriticized or or providing their the opportunity to intervene um uh-huh. and, and now he is his own free agent and is is taking action in the world again um yeah which is interesting <laughs> yeah as for the chapter summary in 5.1 dropping sterling off at emergency daycare ben fumbles for what to do next while an active protest clashes with the civil warriors Ryder reveals what deals with the devil were needed to break the angel circle, and the pair commiserate about how it ain't like it is in the movies. They take the road <laughs> of crazy. most resistance to rescuing the hostages, getting cut in the window when the door was unlocked. Bolden gets the drop on them, and the angel of death tells them to go argue on the internet. When returning to the hostages uh, comes to nothing, like Mia and Carson predicted, Ben and Ryder cancel the Cavalcantis on Twitter baiting the civil warriors into a civil war and framing Davy for Nicholas's shooting, then head off right away to save Ripley and Natalie. Yeah. I mean, God, what a chapter. Very intense. Like a lot, a lot happened here. And I was, I was very glad to see a couple of discussions with um, Ryder or Roderick, whichever you would prefer to call him as um, between, yeah, Roderick and Ben and um, each of them kind of coming to terms with their own, kind of shortcomings um in a lot of ways i i was especially yeah. glad to see Ryder's internal world because mm-hmm. the you know it, it, it's interesting that he doesn't consider himself a cop yeah right the way that he like so certainly the way that the marshals are introduced um both with the uh much of the police on strike and they're beginning private police as a sort of new form of like of law enforcement and police um Uh and yet in in Ryder's mind he didn't he specifically says like i'm not a cop um yeah like he he says like 
yeah, like the police are, are a gang with world class PR, which mm. is true and <laughs> um, remarkably lucid. Um, yeah, because you know, a writer yeah. has been characterized as being very immature, um, and then uh, he, he some, as we now discover, he knows exactly where he sits in the big picture, um, and it's just that he doesn't like. There, there's this just delectable quote. Um, he looked like he wanted to sit on the table with the gunk on it, but decided against it. He didn't seem to know what to do with himself. I wanted to uh-huh. save people in yeah. trouble and being a cop and not it. It's a gang with world-class PR. This seemed like a good route, good money. And I, I look at a woman and she looks like so-and-so and oh, the next woman, she reminds me of someone who cried like things were never going to be okay again. And the man stood there, wrapped her, arms wrapped around his chest, fingers and ribs rather than having them crossed full body tense. I'd like to think I'm one of the good ones, top 25%, because I fucking lose sleep. I keep a phone with me in case someone in need calls. I fucking come to you and do an interview and help, even though you're not paying much. I call in favors. I walk you through this as best I can, which I know wasn't good enough, because look at how it ended. Yeah. Yeah. He f- like Ben even like volunteers the criticism of like him calling himself Ryder. Um, yeah, because, yeah, he does. Like, and, and Ryder's response to that is... Like that he is he is genuinely trying, and that's part of how he's trying. It does mm-hmm. have this um I mean, I mean it, 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 there's immaturity on one side, there's naivety on another, but there's also like the reciprocal to those is like hopefulness or like optimism, yeah, um, and I mean, like you can see that he's like he's traumatized like through his work, like he's standing there like grasping at himself like almost giving himself like the fucking hug that he needs like he can't get close with people because they remind him of people that have been assaulted that he's tried to help like he's traumatized himself like straight up and it's horrible i I don't think he's a good person still but like it's important to note that like yeah his, he's his, trying, but yeah, he is trying, and, and within that, he levels to Ben. He certainly thinks that Ben is a better person than he is, and yet uh-huh. Ben self-selected out of the program. Um, and yeah. the people that went through are the people that are the bounty hunters or the the, the diehards or yeah. um, like the the people that really shouldn't be doing that job, and all of them exactly. are better equipped because, to a certain degree, they they have less of this care that has driven Ryder into trying to live as that sort of hero. Yeah. Uh, It's pretty damning of, like, the entire, you know, industry as a whole. But, I mean, I guess we didn't need the industry to be damned. It's already damned by what Mm. it is. Um, So it's like, yeah, it's just, it, it does hit hard, like, the way that he is just, like, almost desperate to explain who he is as a person to Ben. Mm Mm-hmm. And also damning for a lot of his friends. Like, he has a note where he says, like, I would have had you at my wedding and you would have been one of the few people that was, like, more excited for the wedding than for the bachelor's night. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, you know some fucking trash people. If, like, that is, Mm. that's so damning of, like, your circle of friends. Mm. But, you know, his his circle of friends includes uh, people that he trusted with this mission and that he was wrong to. Um, and quite possibly the police, considering, like, we saw him, like, give, like, a little nod and a wave to a, a cop earlier in the arc. Hmm. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, there's, like, there's parts of this is just, like, heartbreaking to, like, yeah. to see how little he has in terms of friends, in terms of a life. Um, and ultimately, yeah. in the name of doing something very important, not particularly well. Because yeah, exactly. On, on on the highest possible level, I don't believe that there is a way to handle this sort of like to get people out of that, those sort of criminal situations easily. Um, and certainly, uh-huh. like we posed the discussion question last week um, of like what can be done for Ripley now, and it's really not clear. Um, yeah, there's no good answer. Like there's um, no answer that that solves hmm. everything. Like that kid is going to be traumatized by whatever happens she's already being traumatized by everything that happens you know the only thing that would trauma like the thing that would possibly traumatize her the least is going back to Mia and Carson and like that's that's not a good answer that's a horrible answer yeah just let the criminals get away (laughs) come on yeah it's it's where she'll be happy um but um I was like oh my god like yeah and and so Ryder fits right into that network as someone that 
is really with the best of intentions trying to do for the like most right thing, trying to involve himself with um, like the saving of people, still ends up having to make deals with the devil. He has that whole uh, reveal about what the the relationship that he has with the judge. Um, oh yeah, I I did pull that quote. If you want me to, oh please yeah. do. Yeah, so this is him talking about the the judge and uh, pressuring, emphasizing how fragile the status quo was, that Davy was a necessary evil. A world where we made the da- that deal with Davy was one where we got more, were better equipped, had more resources. He made it sound like he was leaving it up to me to weigh the options and decide if that was a deal I wanted to make, but it was pretty obvious what decision he wanted to make. Mm. I don't know, it's kind of so, so horrifying that this is what that judge believes, you know, that the mm. judge is like so firmly on Team Cavalcanti. Or not the, even on Team Cavalcanti, on Team Davy. Or he, he's he's been bored. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, that, not, not just that he has been bored, but he is firm and convincing in making sure that other, other people that work below and with him are also bored. And uh-huh. I, I think when I was reading through all of this, my first instinct with the likes of the judge, um, because but before we had this conversation with Ryder, my first thought was that this is a sort of um, lowest possible oversight signature type position of yeah. like yeah. the the license. There's an, there's enough going on. Things are overloaded enough. That a licensed marshal says, like, does however many things horrible in the course of their line of work, and the judge just gives them the rubber stamp and lets them get back to it because they need people on the ground. Yeah, they need people on the ground. All of the courts are like backed up. They've noted a couple of times throughout the story, and mm-hmm. like, yeah, I yeah, and like, so so I, I'd written off the judge is what I mean to say. Um, mm-hmm. And what Ryder reveals here is it also particularly in the context of what Ben is musing about the condition that uh, the protesters are in, where they are best of intentions but are leaderless. And it's sort of like the, the, there's this image of the bus being overturned and then half the crowd mm-hmm. cheering and half the crowd being dismayed. Um, yeah. And this little instruction paper manual that's trying to like program a crowd by like going, if you have this color, you'll be on this side. Make sure not to do this. Make sure to do that. And it's like trying to get people to hive um, instead of be led. Um, uh-huh. And after Ben has like isolated that as a problem, that there isn't leadership, there isn't a, a, a central sort of direction, then Ryder reveals that the judge and Davy are providing to the marshals and the police and the Cavalcantes very clear direction um they're uh-huh. the the civil warriors are organizing um the the government does enable them or have the or like th- those people on the inside that then direct them in certain directions to bait them the, the when i had considered the judges just a rubber stamp I, i've been putting him in the same condition as the likes of eva who is you know burned out entirely trying to provide um Whereas yeah. actually it's Ryder that has more in common with Eva in this sense um, that um, it's actually both of them are getting um, firm pressure for above for how many compromises they personally have to make. Um, uh-huh. And uh, it's, it's interesting that so much of the conflict in this chapter that we do see is unnecessary. Um with you know coming through the window when they the door was unlocked yeah or yeah. running into the protesters on several occasions and um them uh, being harmless if not benevolent uh-huh. it's it's this unnecessary conflict uh, this unintuitive conflict among peers whereas the forces in charge that are directing things are um are just like are pressing down on individuals to make them have to compromise. And it's, it's it's so interesting that it's this chapter 
where finally the sort of fire that's been on the horizon, as it was in the very early chapters, is completely surrounding our characters. Ben and Ryder have their whole conversation in the midst of the protest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where, and you know, there's that, there's that moment right at the start of the, com- like even before the conversation starts really, where Ben is thinking like, if this goes south, like if, if Ryder is fucking me up, like, can I call out to the crowd and be like, he's a cop. And like, he doesn't really explicitly think it, but like have him like assaulted or murdered possibly considering the levels of anger and vitriol happening. Mm. Um, yeah. Which I think is, is really interesting. Like they are like that close, you know, they are really almost within the crowd. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to take, um, as we get toward the, the chronological section, um, <laughs> I, I, I want to start with Sterling. Um, oh, yes. Because poor baby. Oh, it's genuinely painful. Like that in that first section of this chapter, like it hurts, you know, like, yeah, this is a kid that's never asked for anything. And you know, he's finally taking a, taking a stand for himself and saying, don't leave me alone. You know, mum leaves me alone, but you never leave me alone. And it's like, fuck, dude. Like, yeah. Um, like Ben and like he, like as Ben is like thinking about this, he barely, like he kind of gives it like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm probably in um, Sterling's life the most out of any old adult that's not like his mum or his dad. I don't think that's true, Ben. I think you're in his life a lot more than his dad is. Mm. Because it seems to me, like from the way Sterling was talking with Ripley, like that he goes to his dad for like a day, like a day trip sometimes, you know? Mm. But like Ben's being staying with Natalie, like, and sterling lives with natalie Mm. like like he ben you're a father figure like deal with it you know don't yeah and then you know and then he walk like ben leaves and he just hears sterling like yell out his name and it's like and it notes like ben left what else is he meant to do and it's like fuck dude i don't know what you were meant to do here but this is horrible like Mm. i don't know what you're doing like what the correct answer is but this was heartbreaking like Poor Sterling. Holy hmm. fuck. There's this thing that happens in in the subsequent scene. So like this is our, uh-huh. our framing device. Sterling and uh, Sterling has been left behind. Ben has had the has had to he's he's lost all the other support. There's no way that he can work with the police. Uh, he's lost his camera. Like he's at minimum material. He very reasonably believes that he's the only person that can help Natalie right now and by extension Ripley. Uh-huh. Because, like, Mia and Carson probably going to help Ripley, but not Natalie. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. I don't, think, I don't think Mia and Carson have a lot of love for Natalie at the moment. No, it does not seem that way. Um, but there's... Before he runs out into the world confused and freaking out, we have him leaving Sterling behind and reflecting on the intervening years. Mm-hmm. And and realizing by accident he has been a pillar of parenting in this child's life, and that he just sort of passively by being there is now the person that stays and provides security, mm-hmm. and he has no idea what to do with that. And yeah, he steps out into the world, and like Sterling is leaving a lot of what has just happened in arc four behind with him right like things are resolved sterling is but sterling is still in uh turmoil um and ben is trying to now move out into this arc to try and affect the future um not just leave things where they where they are and he walks out into the protest and on a couple of occasions the protesters like crash into ben and give him some uh-huh. uh, input on his internal world, like, like uh, accidentally. Um, we get yeah. these three yeah. different uh, protesters that jump out. Um, there's the, the the blind lady that like is running at full tilt, 
and slams into him and assumes that he's a friend. So she says, stay angry, keep moving, and then goes. Uh-huh. And, and he had been stunned. So suddenly he is moving and that's what gets him to go reach to Ryder. Yeah. The, the, there's a, at the very end, there's the one that warns them that um, at the end of the Ryder conversation, they, they warn that the civil warriors are encroaching and they need to get moving. Um, because yeah, and then the gunshots happen. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which um, is worrying. Yeah, some those are those are civilians getting into a firefight um, and mm-hmm. probably innocent people dying while trying to protest democratically. Um, yeah. And um, Ben is mistaken for being one of the protesters because there's paint on him. Um, yes. Presumably because a woman who was a protester crashed into him while she couldn't <laughs> see. I gave gave him her blessing and then the send-off is a man who has brought his kid to a violent protest yeah. which ben did not do ben left sterling behind yes and there is there is a picture being painted here of like like angels flying in to deliver messages from on high that they're just stra- they're just strangers <laughs> who serve the single purpose of delivering their message um, and slam into to, to Ben's world. And one of them is just sort of, by presence alone, posing the question of, was this the right thing to do? Because the alternative of leaving Sterling, like, the whole alternative to leaving Sterling behind was to take Sterling with him. And that's crazy. <laughs> and there's gunshots, <laughs> and there's fire, and... And yet some people still think that is the right thing to do. And I feel like that within that palette of events, this sort of like, I I almost want to call it like a a, a, a journey narrative for this little like mini vignette of Ben. Like I when, when I was traveling on the road, I, I met three <laughs> strangers who set, gave me three riddles. Um, there, there is something here about kids in the apocalypse and like... Uh-huh the responsibilities of protecting people that um, can't protect themselves. And the, especially with kids, there's the whole thing of if you are choosing to raise a family or you don't quite get the choice for any number of reasons, like you become a surrogate parent or you uh, have an unexpected kid um, or, you know, you pick one out of a car one day um, because it was getting toasted and they drive off without telling your parents. Um, <laughs> All of those decisions are taking on responsibility, and Ben has just realized that he has a responsibility for Sterling. Not just because, yeah. like, for, for the first time, there's literally no one there, so it becomes very obvious to him. But in truth, he has been there when no one else would be for a long time. Uh-huh. Um, and he's he's stunned by this, and the solutions that the world put forward to him is stay angry, keep moving, and also, have you considered taking him with you? Sterling now depends on Ben, no matter what. Like he can't just put him in a box. So yeah. I, I think this is this is possibly my bold and specific prediction. I think something's going to happen know. to Sterling while no one is there oh. to keep, keep him safe. I like it. That's why we are given these three vis- big visions: the blind woman running, the uh, p- person giving the warning that the uh, warriors have organized an attack, and then the dad with his kid. Um, because Ben does not resemble these. Um, he he's he's been very much the frog in the boiling water that he described. Uh huh. What's what's the line? Um, Things were bad, Ben knew that. They were all frogs in the water, and as fast as the water heated up to a boil, they were finding out the rest of the frogs in the water were not only unwilling to move out of the way or help the situation, but were actively fighting to pretend things were as they had once been, cool and pleasant. So he didn't begrudge them a rattling of the shutters, looting or spray paint. It was natural, that made sense. He just wished they hadn't tipped over a bus he could have used to get out of here. Um, and yeah. in, just in that little thought, Ben realizes that maybe he's... Like, or possibly he's on the cusp of realizing that he's been one of the frogs pretending things have been cool and pleasant. Yeah, see, I, don't, I, don't, I still don't know how, like, where he sits on that. Because he does acknowledge a couple of times in this chapter that um, the protesters are protesting 
kind of validly, like things are bad. Um, and he's kind of accepting that. But this is the first time. And then he doesn't do anything about it, really. Like even at the end, it's not like he does something about the things that are going wrong. He just points the civil warriors in the direction of the government and specifically the Cavalcantes. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know how he really feels about it. He still kind of feels like a frog in that water, just chilling. I, I would say that as if we're going to extend the frog metaphor, there's a period in metamorphosis <laughs> where things look pretty misshapen. Um, and Ben is volunteering what strings he does have. And we can see that it's maybe not perfectly adapted to the situation with him thinking like, oh, we have to bust into the house. I know I'll jump through the window. Oh no, my hand. Um, and oh, oh, the door was unlocked, what do you mean? Um, but, that, you was know, that was a horrible like paragraph <laughs> reading what, like his hand, yeah. <laughs> Hard to gross. read. Um, yeah, but, gross. you know, the, that, that he would then use, it, you know, a bit of his frog material his, he used the information that he has and the, his ability to control a story to uh, the, you know he basically produces an information bomb the, uh-huh. the the hope is that the way that he's constructed the narrative you know there there is things that are true like essentially true in there but there is this very neat detail of um the shooting of nicholas at least by, i think it was max that did that um he, yes, he blames that on davy which is possibly a, yeah. a, a a Mia move of having of funneled those details around herself, um, because uh, the initial plan was to pin things on Davy, but it certainly seems like yeah, that's going to well, be now yeah. the viral story, um, and Ben has put his weight behind that as someone who can present narratives well. So I I really think that fire will take, um, and you know it's moving in the right direction. It, um, it's it's. Uh, growing the frog legs uh, to jump out of the water uh, instead of just yeah. tadpoling around. I don't know. I like it is kind of moving in the right direction. It is directing some anger where there should be anger. But will it help reinstate democracy? I don't really think so. Like it's much like a lot of the conflict in the story of Claw has been, it's very interpersonal. It's very, I don't want to say like selfish, but it kind of almost leans into that. Um, because we know, like, because like we've painted like a pretty decent picture of the world of Claw at the moment. And it's horrifying. And like, you know, the moral thing to do basically is to be down at those like pro-democracy protests. Um, but like none of our conflict is about that, you know, our conflict is these interpersonal issues. Um, yeah. Hmm. So I, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I, yeah. I mean, my natural thought on that is that if this is the kind of thing that happens in Claw's world, then you can imagine that the protests are constructed with people having possibly as complicated encounters. Like... You know, we had that glimpse into De- uh, with Devin's dad of just how like s- serious that family situation is. Um, yeah, yeah. And you know, that's apparently the kind of person um, that is just out uh, out and about and trying to keep things normal and trying to do their best. Um, and yeah, you know, and we, that we, is what everyone's trying. Well, yeah. in their own way. And yeah, it's what is getting to come very clear is that our whole cast actually have a lot of things in common with each other. And there's, there's like Natalie and, uh, and Ben, and I would say Mia as well, um, all have a a good degree of um, self delusion. There, there's facts and figures that they uh, Uh can't quite keep up with. And so have to warp uh, to accommodate their lifestyle Um, to quote Mia, we're good people. Um, (laughs) Uh, there's people who are motivated with really good intention uh, that comes off very poorly or, or very warped. Um, I would put um, Valentina in that category because, um, I mean, how do you even do right in that situation? Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, they're just trying to scramble 
for how best to put things um, and how best to express themselves. And then they like, it's like crabs in a bucket. Um, they get in each other's way. And there's this whole skirmish that we get with um, Bolden uh, c- coming to, uh, from the rafters with a steel chair. Oh, um, what, a, what a moment. What a moment. Bolden is so fun. And the angel of death just trying to explain, I'm, I'm kidnapping agnostic, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> and explaining, like, the door yeah. was open. You could have just walked in. We would have, like, the whole plan is giving you the hostages. So, like, like, why, like, you did not have to cause yourself injury by making it complicated. This scramble. Um, yeah. And uh, I, th- I think, you know, the the direction that I would th- think it is going in is finding that a lot of these people are more similar than they are different and can sooner work together than they can fight. Well, that would be the hope. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, there is a lot of big um, roadblocks to that happening at the moment. And yeah, I guess... Maybe Arc 5 will be us clearing away some roadblocks so that our protagonist figures can work together properly. I think that would be a a fun direction to take Arc (laughs) 5. I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but that would be fun. I would love, of course, my bold and specific prediction of it being Davy this week. Um, Appears... (laughs) You know, it could could have hope if we go chapter by chapter and it's a different perspective each time because if, if that is the case, we have four characters we've established and Natalie as a as an open fifth and then Davy as a possible sixth. Um it's definitely possible. So if it, if we have a, our standard six chapter long arc, that would that would line up quite well. Um so here's how I can still win. Um but <laughs> that's not the point of bold and stiff predictions. The point is to be wrong and it be fun or to be yes. right and it be cool. Um Yes. So for, for what it's worth, mine last week was also wrong, which was Ryder is going to free the girls and use that as a way to get closer to the Cavalcantes to take them all out. And he he didn't he didn't kill any of the Cavalcantes. He I mean they did free the girls and they returned them to Caval- to the Cavalcantes, but that was and kind of just like that. Mia and Carson said, it came to nothing. Yeah, um, yeah. and then they then they got their phone numbers blocked and 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 you know yeah. speaking of uh, Ryder and the Cavalcantes, you've pulled this quote. Um, Apparently, they got the worst of Davy's attention, being the, the organizers oh. of the Angel Circle. So I thought, yeah. again, maybe there was an honor to what he did or does. There was a kind of massive relief hearing that maybe that changed how I read things. So Ryder is the sort of person that appar- like, it, it soothed his soul to hear <laughs> that bad things were happening to bad people. Yeah, like the way that... Because obviously we saw... Um, in arc four, like when Davy was brought up to Ryder, like he seemed uncomfortable, like he gripped the steering wheel, he drove faster. Um, but like hearing that, that, you know, Davy had specifically targeted the people running this angel circle um, for the worst of the worst of his uh, doctor's work. And then he thinks, oh, maybe he has honor, you know, that's a relief hearing that, um, changing like how he reads things um and it's like i don't (laughs) i guess like it's a relief because he thinks davy then won't do that to natalie and uh, ripley which sure but like why would that give you any kind of positive you know like if i heard someone was dismembering people that i didn't like i wouldn't be like oh that person is a friend i would Mm. be like that's a person that's dismembering people. You know, their acceptable target list has previously been these people, but I don't want to be near them in case that acceptable target list expands. I like. I think I. Oh, I, I, this there's a, there's a psychology thing that is coming to my memory, um, where the one of the ways people record memories can be influenced um, is that. If things get just a little bit better or not quite as bad at the very end, then your memory of the whole experience uh, is improved. Um, mm. So, like, doctor's appointment ends with a lollipop, um, or uh, you get a like you're you're in a like freezing cold water bath, but then it gets a little bit warmer. If if you've been in a terrible situation for hours, those memories end up a bit more tepid and more workable. Um, and, you know, that's the same sort of 
um, human response as um, the incentive that incentivizes like exercise, for example, where sure it's, it's painful in the moment, but then you get all these endorphins. So you're incentivized. Um, and if you are like writer and you have this round the clock alert of trying to help people and like win the smallest battles, uh -huh. then you get this relief of hearing that you actually get a comparative relief from hearing that Davy is not that bad. And then you, you easily forget when you've chosen a lesser evil is that you still chose evil. So he's, he's relieved that the criminal uh, mastermind that the judge is cooperating with would only dismember, you know, pedophiles. Like that's, if, if he's doing that, it must be fine, right? Like there's, there, there's no like, like let, let's, we can overlook the, the signs of deep instability in the system if, it, if it's if happening to bad people, right? Yeah. Uh, certainly Not if it gives me- Not that I think me... most people were pedophiles, mm. but the... still, like there was still- bad people well if i if i understood what the angel circle um was about um mm -hmm. but uh i digress on that specific point the <laughs> the m m more to the point in writer's case hearing that davy is not as bad as he could have been or getting to exist in a world where he's not as bad gets him more energy to then do some good because he has other things that he needs yeah. to focus on um, and so he becomes complacent because, I mean, the, well, not because he's being complacent overall, but because he can't have all of his attention on everything. Um, and, you know, he's not wrong when he says shit's easier in the movies. Um, yeah. <laughs> shit is easier in the movies. Yeah, it absolutely is. Like, I mean, God, though, like, what a statement, you know, like, yes, shit is easier in the movies. That's because it's not real. It's because it's a story. Dude, like, you live in the real world, please be an adult. That is his, and we've talked to death, really, about Ryder wanting to be, you know, the heroic gunslinger that rides in and saves the day. But, like, that's just, that's just him being textual about it, you know, like, mm -hmm. wanting things to be like they are in the movies, where you can come in, take out your six-shooter, put down the criminals, and the life is good, and mm -hmm. nobody gets hurt, and then the credits roll. Hmm. Um, and and it becomes very clear why this is the kind of guy that just sort of offhandedly suggested that he'd shoot and kill Mia because yeah, exactly. that would make yeah. things more like they are in the movies yeah it would tie up all of the all of the issues in a neat little bow you know the villain gets killed at the end hmm. and credits roll and Ripley goes back to her family and is happy and everybody is happy and it's okay and it's like hmm. that's not realistic um and it's also <laughs> how Ben was thinking at the beginning of the chapter about Sterling. He's like, I have my, my vision of what would happen when I finished the documentary did not uh -huh. include this. Um, well, it, it didn't include reality, you know, like him saying like Camellia Till would make selective appearances to the media. You know, I, I would like manage most things. And then he's thinking Natalie, Sean, Ripley and Sterling would want to be left alone. And it's like they always would have wanted to be left alone. You know, like you are forcing... Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it, but um, yeah, he's finally grappling with the idea that he would have been forcing celebrity on people for basically the worst possible reason mm. for someone to become a celebrity. Um, and it's something that would have stuck with them um, for their whole lives. <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> it's so fun that Bolden appears after <laughs> in, in this chapter of all chapters. Yeah. And he's so good here. <laughs> his his it's his whole goddamn character that he would perfectly <laughs> ambush from the ceiling with this MacGyver yeah. trap, and in so doing, strapped himself to the fucking things. Yeah, <laughs> and in so doing, reopen his leg like, wounds. Yeah, exactly. B because and, and like like Ryder says, like you probably can't even walk right now. And like, yeah, of course he can't walk right now. He's just no, like, but the the way Ryder would have said that again. was with awe. Yeah, it's... like, or like, oh my god, I bet you can't even walk right now and you, like, ambushed us perfectly and it's like, oh my god. Dude. Oh my god, you're so hot. Okay. Oh, He's I, like, I, yeah. I, now, I now ship Ryder and Bolden also. Um, oh, oh god. But, um, like, there's, oh, yeah. I, I wish, I, I, I wish we got more from Bolden, but he, he 
has this blunt disagreement, despite being like a, a, a man-made mm-hmm. myth. Like he he is insulted to hear that he's called the woodsman. Um, yeah. And yeah. when like I want to be like the people I've heard of in the stories, impossible, Bolton said, because the stories are embellished, dressed up. And Ryder complains, yours wasn't? You're, you can't even stand, yeah. can you? I saw you get to drop on us with two legs that are bleeding like hell. Oh, it's so cool that you were having such a hard time and still doing things. Um, Mm -hmm. But then, like, we know that Bolden's story is embellished because, mm -hmm. you know, people have kind of, as Ryder has done here, like, it's built him up to be, like, a mythological figure when he's just a dude that got gout because (laughs) he doesn't live a a real life. He lives in the woods and hunts for food and doesn't eat enough vegetables. I I, I do like that the Brian and Piss line comes back but it's brined and piss and vinegar yep. because uh, <laughs> yeah because it's that was a ben's one. mind not bolden's ben's not as as disgusting as uh as bolden yeah he, um, he he doesn't realize the truth of the matter okay he doesn't he doesn't yeah. realize what he's been through um but <laughs> yeah the the reason i'm centering this is first of all i'm so happy to see bolden again because i love this guy um but yeah, he so is like v- from the jump introduced as though like with his myth like Carson is explaining mm-hmm. it to Max as they walk through the the forest where he's set up. Um, and the first thing that Bolton says is, I have gout. Um, like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually not an ethereal like super being. I have a mortal body that if I eat enough, uh, eat too much salty food, I get gout. It's... <sighs> the writer is meeting someone that he almost wants to be. And yeah. that someone is... He wants to be the good version of him. He wants to be He wants to be the good version of Bolden. He wants to be the, the John Wick to this, like, um, dark side MacGyver, dark side Rambo. At the same time, Bolden, like, we know to be deeply lonely and deeply unhappy. And these two, once again, mm-hmm. have a lot in common. Um, yeah. And... Oh God! Now I see the ship as well. Fuck's sake. <sighs> yep. Sorry. Sorry. I just. I just. What. What can I say? I. I. I have. I have identified the places where these two puzzle piece, pieces would meet, and once and again, it is people are alone and need good company and need people to that they can you, get fond over. Um, why are you such a fujoshi? I don't know what that word means. <laughs> I believe that is, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, that's the one that was used earlier on in the book um, when we vowed to stop shipping for a short amount of time. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, well, that's, that's what I get for not reading that, carefully. girls that heavily, heavily ship uh, men. Oh. Girls that are, like, obsessed with Yao. I, oh, I, I, th- I thought it was, like, the format. Um, I suppose that this is, a, a, a lot of my ships are very queer. Um, yeah. And, um I, I would say <laughs> taken in aggregate there there is no there is no gender preference uh, prevailing uh-huh. um, so that but but I am a prolific shipper um, so I can't I can't yeah. be I, there is not so much hill for me to stand on here even to plant my flag <laughs> um, but m- moving on from how I think the um, <laughs> Max Ryder Bolden throuple would be much more effective. Um, and, yeah, yeah. You know, he, and, and uh, let's 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 move away from any Rod Ryder jokes that I could make, um, or mm-hmm. you know, the Sax Ryder like pun that's uh, very obvious, or any any of that. We can put it to the but side. We, we don't, we don't in, need to. We don't need to. Um, what yeah. we should talk about is the Angel of Death. Yeah, I really loved seeing her in this because we. Like, this is basically the most we've seen her talk. Hmm. Um, she just has not been super active in other, yeah, in other parts of the book. And I really, I have really enjoyed her perspective here um, as someone that's kidnapping agnostic. <laughs> um, if you want to argue, go on the internet. <laughs> ah, such a good fucking line. That one, that one got a good laugh out of me. But yeah, I like that she, yeah, like like she says, she's agnostic here. Like, she has very complicated thoughts about the kidnapping as like as we saw when they were moving the girls into this building like she didn't seem comfortable with it and yeah we can see that she doesn't seem very comfortable with it she's just giving them like medical care mm. but and doesn't feel like she can like you know remove them from the situation and, and like, even save them says to like the writer and says of writer and ben they're the good guys which Bolden yeah, doesn't believe exactly. in, but like that's a that's high yeah. praise. Um, it is. 
certainly is very self-aware because she's recognizing that she's working with what would be the bad guys. Yes, and Bolden disagrees. Bolden says, you know, the only people that are the good guys are Mia and Carson. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's yeah. that's because um, he wants to keep working with them and, and uh, his his cool new friend that he's just made. Um, <laughs> I think he has a very warped uh, perspective because I do not think Bolden would say that he is a good guy. No, um, no. Yeah. But he has, he has his perspective. But it's, it's the, they um, are also the people that helped him. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and that's it. And like they're, they're looking after their children and stuff like that. Like I can kind of see where he's coming from, but he is wrong. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's easy to see why he's arrived at that conclusion, even if it's crazy. And, you know, very big mistrust for authority. Um, we, yes. have, we have a single clue for why the angel of death is like this. Um, there's this throwaway line that she doesn't want to be restrained, but she will put her hands flat on the floor um, and lie down. So I just want to put forward the possibility that this is that there has been some time in her life where she was kidnapped or put in similar restraint. Um, and that, like that is part of how she's been in the criminal sphere. Um, and hmm. especially in the context of what apparently is the, the primary manner in which doctors are employed in um, the underground of cameras, which is uh, doing surgery on uh, people in restraints. Um, there's, ah. there's a real, Eesh. there's plenty of good reasons why the angel of death might feel that way. And there's also the very significant component of all of them would involve like having having experienced that sort of thing either as a spectator or involved in one side of the process or a victim to the other. Um, mm -hmm. So like e even as she's trying to stay agnostic, even as she's trying to stay anonymous and volunteers only her pseudonym, um, she... Uh, that we get this glimpse of of the person beneath the mask. Yeah, yeah, and I I really liked seeing. I I hope we will see more of her. But it sounded like she was pretty keen to leave the situation. So mm. yeah, she she does say Unless, our job is done. Um, yeah, and hey, bold and specific prediction: Arc Six Angel of Death. <laughs> oh wow, incredible! Yeah. Well, uh, I'll follow you up on that one. Um, <laughs> But mm -hmm. the I, I do I do hope it's not the last we've seen of Bolden, just because um yeah. you know, get this man He's in a car, so um one hand of the wheel, one hand on a gun, I think he'd be fine. Uh just yeah. just needs someone to uh you know sit remarkably close and and to do the brakes and the accelerator. And you know, Max <laughs> was watching this whole scenario and letting it happen, uh, standing back so as not to cause a firefight. Um And look, we have we have seen Max drive a car but only do the leg parts yeah so, you know he's, he's even you know? They're, they're even practicing and um <laughs> it's 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 like a three-legged race in many ways it's just that it's for the road um uh-huh <laughs> um sorry uh, i i i did say that i would move off of this topic so what if we talk about the theme because uh, we do have a new arc name yes we have the quick <laughs> Um, so like for in the case of claw, um, the quick as in like the, the quick of your nails, like being bitten to the quick. So like the, being really raw, being like vulnerable at the hands. Um, uh -huh. but there's also stay angry, keep moving, get quick, um, and better uh -huh. act quickly. Um, so the story is definitely ramping up to a, uh, a, a, a very quick scenario. Um, yeah. I, I really think that um, the, the situation as we know it, which is already getting worse, is going to get terrible over the course of this arc. Um, I'm expecting institutions yeah. to burn down, um, if not the Cavalcanti's with them. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if things start really, really going pear-shaped. But hopefully that is a pear-shaped in which things can get better afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, hopefully. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, right. Uh, should we do our bold and specific predictions? I believe that it's time for rotating perspectives. 
And that uh-huh. next chapter, we will have uh, another and then another and then another for the whole arc until we eventually get to Davy. Okay, I like that. I my mine is that it's rotating perspectives going backwards. So we start with Ben, and then we'll go to um, Valentina, and then we'll go Carson. Have I fucked up the? I think I've ben, lost Valentina, someone already. Valentina, Carson, Mia, and then Natalie, Davy, yeah. maybe. And then and then no, just a, just a short arc. Mm. I'm thinking like a four, or then maybe going back forward. I could see. So then a double Mia, Carson, Valentina, um, Ben, end of arc. Arc six will then be Davy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it'll be called something like eviscerated or something. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, or, or like mutilated or uh, vivisected or surgical yeah, yeah. or scalpel. Something or, like that. Um, yeah. But um, for... I, I actually don't think these are bold and specific enough. I feel like it's very reasonable to assert these. We need, we need to think of something sillier. Um, right. Yeah. Yours is the throuple. Uh, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my entire uh, reputation and any any respect that anyone has for me um, on uh, the the completely malformed, entirely unpredictable <laughs> ship of um Ryder uh and Bolden and also Max. I think I think they should do an action movie team up. I think they should do a spin-off series. I think there should be a long long slow burn of them do, like doing good as best they can. Um and uh like it's like a suicide squad thing for for Max and Bolden where they they're working on the one on on the other side of the law so that they can uh, get plea deals and return to their old lives. And uh, by it's um, o- over the course of lots of different uh, traumatic missions, the kinds that are really harrowing to Ryder to his core, there's going to be uh, this growing like rapport that goes from like uh, teammates to something more. And eventually um, after, you know, a, a long and uh, hard uh, adventure, um, Bolden settles down back at his like old home, uh, now being returned to him for uh, as part of his uh, final. Uh, he, he's he's put on a, a very short leash. Um, he like uh, it's 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 sort of what's the, what, what's the house arrest? It's like he, for, uh-huh. for all those people he murdered, he, he gets to like be on call uh, as a as basically a super soldier, but has to stay. Um, at his place, which is what fine by him, um, and uh, he then has this sudden emotional realization when he's sitting in the, the house that he's fought for with the chickens that he wanted. Uh, that he just writes a fanfic. My he God. just can't do it without Ryder and without Max. And he goes running out on his uh, no longer cat riddled feet, and there's this a big emotional reunion. It's fantastic. <laughs> I, I, it's, that, that's that's going so so after Cole. That's the next. That's the next wild boat work. I'm not going to have to write it myself. I actually uh-huh, hadn't okay. thought about that at all beforehand. Um, that, that just, off, that just came out dome. somewhere. I'm very confused. <laughs> nice. Um, well, okay, my, my bolder and specifica prediction then is that uh, s- someone is living in the walls of that house um, <laughs> that has been trying to get uh, the, the three girls out. Um, that's what, like, I've, I've noted a couple of times that, like, things have been happening in that house. And so that's my, yeah, someone's living in the walls. Wasn't there, like, trying a, to get like the a rat? Of girls out. Uh, very early yeah on. that's it's yeah the rat. that's what they thought it was they thought it was a rat some kind of but like, it wasn't it was someone that was living in the walls some kind of person with superpowers that them control really small mammals <laughs> <laughs> like rats and stuff no, never never heard of anything like that that sounds crazy some kind of tyler um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, Any, anyway for anyway, our yeah. discussion question um, last discussion. week we yeah. asked <laughs> Now that Ripley's in the worst possible custody, what do you think is her best possible solution? Should we should she stay with Natalie or visit me and visit vi- vi- Jesus Christ and visit Mia or what? Um, I, I don't blame you for stammering after that very emotional conversation. Um, <laughs> Four O I two uh, says that it's very difficult. Um, I don't think there are any truly happy outcomes for Ripley, not any realistic ones anyway. 
Escaping with Mia would mean uprooting her whole life and losing her identity, even if she is relieved at first. I can easily see her life falling apart soon after. And in any other scenario where Mia escapes without her, I don't see Mia leaving Ripley to live in peace and going. Um, we seen uh, Natalie seem like a recipe. For, going with Natalie seems like a recipe for disaster. So trying to minimize trauma for Ripley and number of casualties, Mia, Carson, Natalie, and Davy all die. Mia and Carson in such a way that Rip doesn't learn about it and thinks they have escaped. Uh, Sean gets scared and runs off. Rip and Tear and maybe Sterling are adopted by Devin's parents, making, at a, I, I believe, a family of 11, if I'm correctly remembering mean, those eight kids. Um, and Rip keeps with her friends. Val takes over the Cavalcanti's organization and is able to protect them. She stays in touch and maybe as a bonus suppresses Ben's story. Um, so I think this is the best yeah. answer, and um, <laughs> I, I think that does cover everything. We just destroy the whole cast, and then uh, yeah. Rip and Deer get adopted by a new family. That are hopefully also not criminals. <laughs> uh, take it or leave it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so Sweet Manzana says, uh, Ripley should go with uh, Valentina and the other kids, maybe steal Ben's identity and become some kind of kid detectives, solving mysteries in this horrible pre-apocalyptic world, also get a dog in a van. The only problem is that Val probably wants to be with Mia, and I'm not sure Ripley will, will be by the end. Uh, maybe they can go find Val's real mum if she's alive and stay with her. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. So I think this is the best answer, and it really should be the one that yeah. happens in Claw. Um I think that's good. As we just need to invent Scooby snacks for Claw, and yeah. then it's all good. Um, Belleg Tal, uh, Dante, from uh, the uh, our, our sister podcast, as it were, um, <laughs> Ripley wakes up, and this was all a dream, and everything is fine. More plausible answer, I actually think there's still a possibility that Natalie and Mia will end up getting along okay. Maybe Natalie will join their host family business as some sort of aunt figure. So I think this is the best answer, and it's definitely what should happen in Claw. That's... that's <laughs> Definitely, definitely a take is Natalie joining the Hearst family as an aunt. I don't think Mia's, I don't think that they have uh, personalities that would mesh that quite that well. Um, yeah. So I guess for our answers, um, honestly, it's such a difficult question. I'm saying like maybe they can do like split custody with Natalie moving to cameras so that Ripley can stay with her friends. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a good answer, but I think it's not nothing. Well, you know, question mark? A part, part of the reason of asking is that it's not an easy answer. And it is the one uh, yeah. that is the, the fact that there are the, the, the vacuum where this answer would be is causing so much chaos in the lives of these characters. Um, yes. So I, I've, I've considered the council. I've, I've weighed up all of the answers that have been provided. And I think that the only way forward is that Ripley should be kidnapped, forcing Mia and Natalie <laughs> to team up to get her back. Oh, wait. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. So actually, uh, I think the solution to all of these crimes and all of these this trauma and insult is more crimes and more trauma. I think that is what's going to really get everyone back on side. And I think that's what's going to happen in the arcs to come. Yeah, look, I do think more crimes and more trauma is what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if it's what I think is the best thing to happen, but, you know, it's hey, fine. Surely if you put enough, if, surely if you scar the scar tissue enough, it'll start looking like normal tissue again, right? Yeah, that's how that works. Um, okay, so this week's discussion question is... What stories guide you through your life and identity? Yeah, so kind of similar to how Ryder was talking about you know, the movies and the stories that guide him being the big action hero, et cetera. Yeah. Mm, I, th I think what, what, yeah. The, the, in, in a major way, um, you know, having, growing up with a given role model, growing up with um, like representation in media, the result of that is that you have a, a better grasp of where you're going. And so in a big way, stories, whether that's just like, and I want to be specific here and opening it out to like people in your life that have uh, like, been role models to follow in the footsteps of the, their story, their uh, their history, uh, but also like narratives and um, things you can get in a book um, for trying to cobble together a self concept and you know live in li like step out of the cast shadows like Valentina has been trying to do, um, but also uh -huh. perhaps be led astray by the uh, with Ben and Ryder. Yeah. All right. So that's that's our podcast for this week. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, you can check out Wildbo's Patreon at patreon.com slash wildbo. This is his open window. We're just razors painted green. Please give us a rating and review on the podcast of your choice. 
And if you want to chat to us about the show or follow along with some live reads, check out our channel on the Doof Media Discord. Find the invite link at doofmedia.com slash discord. Bye for now. Bye.